Another Fox News alert on the Korean Peninsula. The U.S. scrapping a military exercise with South Korea involving B-52 bombers. This comes after North Korea threatened to pull out of next month's meeting between President Trump and Kim Jong-un in Singapore. Asia analyst Gordon Chang joins me now here in the studio. He is the author of Nuclear Showdown, North Korea Takes on the World. Thank you so much for talking to us. Um, the scrapping of this planned training exercise, obviously, at the hands of South Korea. They were afraid that it might provoke more tension ahead of the summit between the president of the United States and Kim Jong-un. Does this give North Korea the upper hand? I actually don't think it does, but certainly it shows that North Korea has the upper hand over South Korea. Of course. You know, Moon Jae-in, I think, is, is very sympathetic to North Korea. For him, the most important thing is unification of the two Koreas into one state. And he's not willing to do anything to antagonize the North Koreans. You know, some people say that he's naive. I'm afraid that he's just basically pro-North Korean. But mm -hmm. with regard to the U.S., no, it doesn't give them the upper hand because we still yeah. have the military power and the economic power. Let's not forget North Korea conducted several missile tests, okay, for the past year. Um, back in October, the South Korean defense minister and the defense secretary, James Mattis, came to an agreement that these regular drills needed to happen. Now South Korea completely changes course. Um, they were going to fly these B-52s uh, from Guam, okay, right. the Japanese and the United States South Korean Air Forces. Let's not forget that Kim Jong-un threatened that he had a nuclear weapon capable of hitting Guam. So why let down our defenses now? Well, I, I think that, first of all, in South Korea, there's a lot of antagonism with the Japanese. So any military exercises involving Japan is going to be controversial in South Korea. Now, the South Koreans take a very short-term view because the Japanese are not the ones threatening South Korea. It's basically yeah. North Korea with the backing of China. But South Korea doesn't sort of see it that way. Um, but Moon Jae-in just is very pro-North Korean. I mean, he has been for his entire career. He's been trying to do things to make South Korea more compatible with right. North Korea so they can actually have a union. And that's very dangerous for us. You know, it was interesting. First of all, South Korea has basically had its talks canceled, okay, right. uh, by North Korea. So obviously... Kim Jong-un feels like he's in the seat of power because he's trying to send a message to the United States. Mess with me, I'll cancel your summit next. Um, what did you think of John Bolton's remarks regarding the Libyan model, comparing, you know, Muammar Gaddafi, who was killed after giving up his nuclear weapons? That was a bad move at this time after all the work that's gone into place to this upcoming summit. Yeah. Bolton, at the end of April, when he made those Libyan model remarks, yeah. could have just said, look, our model is the North Koreans give up all their weapons up front, and then we provide concessions later on, aid, assistance, whatever. He didn't say that. He used something which probably was, in his mind, deliberately provocative. But nonetheless, Julie, you know, the North Koreans, they've sort of cited that as a reason why to stop the talks with South Korea and mm -hmm. maybe not to talk to us. But that's not the reason, because Bolton made those remarks at the end of April, and last week, they released three Americans. So, you know, if right. that was the real problem with North Korea, they wouldn't have let those guys go. So basically, North Korea wanted an excuse. It wanted something that sort of, I think that for them, yeah. could blame us. But they're not really angry at us. And at least he's, they're not angry at Bolton. I mean, they're not fans of Bolton. No, they're not fans of Bolton. But that can't not have been the reason for right. North Korea's series of propaganda So again, blasts. then it goes back to Kim Jong-un. He's playing games again, you know. And here we are. We're, 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 we're halting right. these military drills. These drills are put in place for a reason. They are defense drills in the case of an attack. And now the summit with the president and North Korea is already being, it's almost like we're tap dancing around Kim Jong-un. Well, you know, we're still continuing with Japan on the B-52 drills. It's right. just that South, South Korea South Korea has just decided but, not to take part. You know, I think President Trump, you know, he's, he's taking exactly the right position, which is, look, we'll prepare for the summit. And if I were Trump, I'd actually say to Kim Jong-un in public, look, do you want to meet? Yes or no. Mm -hmm. And it should be that clear. Do you think the meeting's going to happen? What do you think ultimately will come out of it? I, I think the meeting will happen because the North Koreans do need to speak to us. They need sanctions relief. And so, you know, it might not be June 12th. It might be later on in the year. It might not be in Singapore. It might be someplace else. But I think that they will occur. You remember historically around July 4th, a lot of times we saw a lot of nuclear testing. I mean, that and is... And missile testing as well. Yeah, we saw a lot of the missile tests and, and them shooting off these long-range missiles. And it always happened to coincide with well, July 4th, which is America's day to recognize freedom. Um, I'm hoping this July 4th is much different than years past. I think it will be, Julie. I'll be an optimist.
All right. I also want to just bring up the detainees that were released because you mentioned, and it's very interesting to look at the timing in all of this. Right. The fact that those three de detainees were released, um, much unlike Otto Wambier, that speaks volume as to the work this administration has done in changing relations between North and Korea, possibly for the very first time in such magnitude. No, you're absolutely right about that because Otto Wambier last June came back in a vegetative state, died just a few days after returning. These three guys came back in very good condition. They walked on the plane by themselves. And that's an indication that North Korea understands it needs goodwill from President Trump right now. We are getting breaking news right now that China has landed a bomber in the South China. Uh, what was is it? Woody Island. In the South in, China Sea the for the parcels. very first time. What do we make of that? Well, this is a violation of Xi Jinping, the Chinese ruler's pledge to President Obama okay. September 2015 in the Rose Garden where the Chinese said they would not militarize their islands in the South China Sea. You know, the Chinese are villains, but it's now up to the United States to prevent the Chinese from doing that by imposing costs. And we've got to remember the Chinese blinded a couple of American pilots over Djibouti in, in Africa. Right. And we haven't imposed any costs on that. That occurred about two, three weeks ago. And the Chinese have been using lasers like they did in Djibouti in the South China Sea. You know, we need to tell the Chinese, first of all, no military to military exchanges. Right. We need to start expelling Chinese diplomats because they've injured American service personnel for the first time since the end of the fighting in the right. Korean War. This can't go unnoticed, unremarked. And the president of China, Xi Jinping, I mean, he has a what would be considered a pretty healthy relationship with the president of the United States. Um, but yet this we still get news like this. You know, what is going on between these two countries? And when is China finally going to get the message? The Uni United States is not messing around. So don't mess with what we're trying to fix. Well, the Chinese will get the message, don't mess around, when we actually start imposing costs on Beijing. We've been very reluctant to do that across the whole range of issues. Um, and so I think that essentially this is an American issue. This is not a Chinese issue. Look, the Chinese don't like us. They're trying to undermine the U.S. They're trying to rule the world. But okay, but we've got to stop them. We've got the power to do that, Julia. And American presidents, up to President Trump, haven't mm -hmm. done it. President Trump is not exactly clear where he's going on this because he too has been reluctant to actually call out the Chinese right. in public and make them pay for very dangerous conduct. And I just want to reiterate once again, first of all, this breaking news coming in is coming in from China. Okay, so these are coming from Chinese sources. Yeah, they're basically saying, we're doing this. What are you going to do about but it? But they're also reporting that this is a nuclear-capable bomber. Bomber, yes. Yeah, I think it's the H6K. But whatever right. it is, yeah, basically they're, they're daring us to do something about it. And they know that we haven't done anything in the South China Sea for a very long time, right. especially in the Obama administration. So they're going to kick us until Don't we... Don't dare this administration. I think we've all learned. Yeah, and I'd like to see Trump push back on the South China Sea. That's really critically important. Yeah, all right. Well, we're going to continue to talk about this. Uh, interesting. Thank you very much. Gordon Chang, always great to see you. Thanks, Julie.